Good morning, folks. Last night it was reported that Comet Ison is an outburst. Came from the pros. But unfortunately, we still have the people who stole and photoshopped Bruce Gary's work somehow managing to convince people that there are secondary objects accompanying Ison. Listen, if we're going to believe things like that, you might also have heard that there's no info on this comet, that it's somehow been hidden. But the truth is that Comet Ison is officially one of the most observed comets in human history now, and there's more info on it than you could read in your lifetime. It got tagged with the CME before that previous brightening about 10 days ago, and when Cactus updated the latest blast heading at Ison, I knew that my prediction yesterday would be wrong. It likely hit Ison yesterday afternoon, not to be hit tonight could have caused the major brightening. We still await confirmation of the magnitude increase and will continue watching for flare induction on approach to perihelion. Links are below. Top recommendation, NOAA's Environmental Visualization Lab with a good ocean nutrient map and article in tow. It's come to Africa. Parts of the southeast took the second damaging hailstorm of the season, sent locals into a frenzy protecting cars and other property. Obviously not as bad as what's happening in the Philippines, which is still in dire straits. Region not quite out of the woods yet, could be another storm or two this year. Meanwhile, there is already development west of the Philippines and another end of the Indian Ocean up in the Bay of Bengal. China, Vietnam, India, all on watch. Quickly answering a good question and opportunity for review. You will see the precipitation follow this meeting point of air masses tonight in the United States because the masses have vastly different temperatures, pressure, densities, moisture, particle chemistries, electric potential, and static, and where they collide, a common ground must be worked out above our heads as fast as nature can feasibly facilitate it. Solar flaring, struggling to keep the uptick alive. You see that even more when you realize the sunspots aren't exactly hiding. The leading southern group interacts so, should be called one gamma group. We don't yet see anything delta though. Looking right behind him, down south we see our extended region. And decay has lightly stripped the Zurich Class F, but we do have three potential deltas at the backside mixing point. Last but not least, the northern incomers are more of your large umbras with some trailing smaller spots. Big guy looks like he should be firing major flares, just isn't. Looking at the solar wind, I see two potential interplanetary shocks from CMEs, but they're very, very minor. Interestingly, the leading shock appeared to jolt our system on the electron flux, and with the GridX drill, I think I said oh shit when it happened loud enough for my co-workers to hear me checking space weather at the office. But it was nothing, and the KP continues to be quiet. Corona hole power had shifted north, but that kicked back to a more serious southern focus yesterday. Some minor weakening in Earth's position may have been offset by the maintained open coronal fields, blocking as little force as possible. Unusual location rumbles continue. A couple more four-pointers off the west coast. It's way too many of those last two weeks. Also took a six-pointer down at the bottom of the world. This should count with the other recent Atlantic rumbles. Good closing point. Noah's Enlil Spiral has shown none of the CMEs this week, and indeed shows a leading density spike up top to a coronal hole stream that is absurd, that black arc. If that's correct data, one of the incoming coronal holes could be more relevant than all these X-flares. Shots of our star to close, eyes open, no fear at 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.